Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will share with you a horror movie from 1963. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The waves rolled in slowly as a lone horseman, Duvalier, rode along the shore in what seemed to be midday sun. He checked his watch, which he soon tossed as it was not working. He was carried a little further by his horse before he collapsed from it onto the shore, unconscious. A man watched from the rocky cliffs in the distance. Duvalier, who was now awakened by a splash of water on his face, saw a beautiful woman standing in the shallow waters underneath a rocky cove. He called out to her, seeking help as he had been separated from his regiment and he was thirsty. She walked from under the cove and right past him, then away from him. He followed her to a place where she stood on some rocks and offered him clear drinking water from the mountain spring. He bent down and readily drank the water, and when he looked up again to speak to her, she had disappeared. He sought her out and found her pulling water from a spring with a bucket attached to a rope. He engaged her in conversation and found her name to be Helene. He followed her through the trees, by a pond, up through the mountains, and back again to the shores of the beach to the cove where he first found her. She walked into the now heavy waves, and he followed her into the waters. A large bird tormented him while in the waters, until he was swallowed up by the waters. He woke again, now lying in a bed of sorts covered by a blanket in a little shack. He saw visions of Helene, which turned out to be an elderly woman. She offered him some medicine from an old bottle and a big wooden spoon. He drank the medicine, and again saw the bird that tormented him earlier on the beach. He tells the old woman about it, and she tries to assure him that the bird is harmless, but he asks her to take it away and inquires about Helene. The woman tells him there was no girl and that he must have been dreaming. A man enters the room by the name of Gustav. The elderly woman instructs her new patient that Gustav brought him there and looked after his horse. She asks Gustav if he had seen a girl to prove to Duvalier there was no girl, and he shook his head in a negative response. Duvalier awakened again, this time by the window shutters banging from the wind. He sees the bird eating the last bit of a captured prey, and it then flies through the window which was now flung open. He gets up, puts on his coat, then notices a thin, sheer piece of cloth on the table. Holding it in his hand, he looks off in the distance, wondering. He follows the bird through the trees which led him to again find Helene by the stream. He speaks to her, and she silently approaches him, rests her head on his shoulder, kisses him, then walks away. He follows her through the trees and comes upon Gustav, who saves him from walking into quicksand by whispering a warning for him to wait, picks up a large rock, and throws it into the quicksand. Duvalier is shocked that Helene intended to kill him, but Gustav tells him the girl is possessed and needs his help. He directs him to the castle von Lepp and tells him to find Eric, who knows. Gustav then runs away. Morning dawns as Duvalier draws a picture of Helene. The elderly woman comes in and informs him that he should leave soon to rejoin his regiment. Duvalier asks about Gustav as he needed to show him the castle, but is told he is away. He requests that she show him the way instead, and she immediately asks why he was so interested in the Baron. He responds by saying he wasn't, and that he simply wanted to find Helene, who he believes lives there. She tries to assure him that there is no girl, and that she doesn't recognize the drawing. He walks out with the drawing, intent on finding the girl. The elderly woman follows him, insisting there is no girl, and that Duvalier not tell the Baron she was there. Duvalier rode up the mountain on his horse, and then came upon a rock slide that almost fell on him, but he continued till he was again by the shore where he drank some water and held the castle in his view. He rides up to it, rests his horse, and calls out to see if anyone was there. He sees Helene at the window and proceeds to knock on the door, demanding entry under the title of the government of France. The door is then opened by Baron von Lepp. Duvalier insists that the Baron allow him to stay, after which he is invited into the castle. Duvalier is given a brief history of the house, and the Baron continues in conversation with Duvalier as Stefan, the butler, fetched drinks at the Baron's command. Duvalier inquires about Helene, who he saw at the window, but the Baron insists that there was no such woman and proceeds to show Duvalier a picture of Helene, who had been dead from twenty years ago and happened to be the Baron's wife. Duvalier was then told that Stefan would show him to his room. It was now night and the waves crashed onto the shores. The horse got spooked by the weather and ran away. Duvalier, while studying the drawing, realizes the wind had blown out the fire from the candles. At that moment, he notices Helene again walking across the cemetery and standing at the entrance of a chapel. He tries to leave, but the door was locked from the outside. He hears scratches and other noises at the door and sees a shadow, as if someone was there. He grabbed his gun and called out for the door to be opened as he threatened to shoot. He opened the now unlocked door and proceeded to explore the halls of the castle, 
with his gun at the ready. Cautiously, he came to the front door and went outside to the cemetery, then the chapel, looking for Helene. Inside the tomb, he sees Helene's crypt. He re-enters the house and finds that the picture of Helene shown to him by the Baron earlier had disappeared and left only an empty frame. He walks back up to his room and is frightened when he sees Helene inside the door of his room, then she disappears. He enters the room to find his drawing laying on the bed torn in two. The Baron is seated at his table being served by Stefan as they spoke about Duvalier and whether he has heard village rumors. The Baron suggests he leave as soon as possible, but of his own free will, and that respect be shown to him. Stefan agrees and walks away. Duvalier returns to the tomb and looks around. He is then questioned by Stefan as to his purpose at the castle. Duvalier chastises him and reminds him to remember his place. Stefan advises Duvalier that his horse has run away. Duvalier soon asks about Eric and is told by Stefan to leave the Baron and his memories in peace and not to concern himself with matters that don't concern him. Duvalier walks in to see the Baron to confront him about his missing horse and the mysteries he has come upon since he arrived. After threatening to return with the authorities, the Baron gave in and told Duvalier about Ilsa, his wife, who he killed out of rage when he found her in bed with a lover. Stefan killed the lover, and they have both kept the secret for years. The Baron had not left the castle since and mourned about that night since it happened. He believes Ilsa's ghost has been coming around for the past two years and he wants to see her. Gustav sees Helene overlooking the waters from a cliff and runs to her, and they have a talk. He calls her Ilsa and informs her that the elderly woman who she says brought her from the sea should not be trusted. He tells her she must return to the sea, that she mustn't listen to the old woman. He tells her he knows who can help her. The bird squawks above, and she delivers a message to him from the elderly woman that he must not interfere and that she has been patient with him long enough. Stefan, having heard Duvalier mention the elderly woman, went to her shack in the night. He peeped through a window and found her preparing a potion in a cauldron pot. Seated in the middle was Helene, completely hypnotized by the elderly woman, who Stefan now realizes is a witch. The witch used a spinning lamp of many colors, along with a magnifying glass, as she chanted words which tell the spirit of Ilsa to completely possess Helene's body. When she was finished with her spell, the girl disappeared from the chair. Stefan enters the shack uninvited and begins to question the witch about her purpose there and the activities he just witnessed. He advises her to leave within a day's time because she was trespassing on the Baron's land. Stefan threatened to burn the shack down, and in that moment, the witch asks him if he knew who lived in the shack three years ago. She then told him it was Eric. Stefan is again at the castle, where the Baron questions if Duvalier was now gone. Stefan responds in the negative and suggested they kill him. The Baron outright refused to do that and told Stefan to stay away from the crypt. Duvalier searches the castle and finds in one of its many rooms a box with a gun and one bullet in its chamber. He then opened a cupboard and found the picture of the Baroness. The door to the room he is now in closes by itself after which he hears a female's voice call out to him for help. The door again reopens and Duvalier continues to search the castle. The Baron ascends the stairs and Duvalier hides so he can follow him. The Baron enters his room and Duvalier bursts into it after him thinking he heard a female voice coming from the room. Duvalier apologizes for the intrusion, confessing he thought he heard voices. The Baron, noticeably upset, instructs Duvalier to leave as soon as Stefan returns from the village with a new horse for him. Duvalier agreed. Stefan returns with the horse for Duvalier and tells him that he is doing the right thing to leave as the Baron was still stricken with grief about the Baroness and often behaved strangely as a result. Stefan stated he may never recover. Before leaving, Duvalier asks Stefan who Eric was. He was advised that Eric was the Baroness's lover that he returned from war to find in bed with her. Duvalier processed this information as he rode off and Stefan closed the castle's door. Duvalier again rides alongside the beach where he sees Gustav walking along the rocky cliff. Gustav waves to Duvalier to wait, but is then attacked by the same bird flying overhead who plucked out his eyes. He fell off the cliff to the rocky ground below. Duvalier rushes to him, just in time to hear Gustav say with his final breath that the girl saw him and loves him and that he alone can save her by going back to the castle that night. Duvalier returns to the cemetery on the castle grounds and sees Helene at the entrance of the chapel. They enter, and she kisses him, they kiss, and he promises never to leave her again. Helene tells Duvalier that she is possessed by the dead and that the crypt must be destroyed. He tells her there are doctors in Paris who can heal her and that she should leave with him. 
She refuses because she is scared and tells him the chapel is the only place she is free. They kiss again and declare their love for each other. He then leads her outside and asks her to wait on him by the gate. He turns to walk away, and as the thunder claps, he turned back around to realize she was gone. He went back into the castle and saw the Baron pull on a chain to open a portcullis. He follows him into the room, down a secret passageway, opened by turning the candle on the wall. He followed the Baron down a dark stairway and along a narrow passageway. The Baron enters a room and kneels over a coffin as he speaks to Ilsa. He promises her that he will soon be with her as Stefan was going to flood the crypt and they would soon be together. He calls out to Ilsa, asking why she won't speak to him. Then he hears her voice, telling him to flood the crypt so they can be together. He sees a vision of her, but refuses to do what she asks, as he says his soul would be damned. Duvalier enters the room at this moment from where he was watching close to the entrance and barges in. He calls out for Helene, insisting on finding out who the girl was, but she had now disappeared. He returns to assist the now-collapsed Baron. The Baron lay on the bed covered in blankets with a damp cloth on his forehead. Stefan tends to him at the bedside as he and Duvalier speak with each other. Duvalier then asks for the keys to the chapel, and they leave the room together. The crypt is opened by Stefan, but was rusted in and could not be opened. Duvalier requests a crowbar, and they go find it. When outside, Stefan notices a light moving towards the Baroness' bedroom in the tower which had been sealed since her death. Duvalier tells Stefan to come with him, and they run back into the castle. They reach the Baroness's bedroom door, and Duvalier requests the key from Stefan, only to be told that the Baron is the only one with that key. Duvalier proceeds to push against the door, and Stefan tries to stop him. He kicks the door open and examines the room where a crib is found. He queries if the Baron and Baroness had a child. The Baron enters at this point and gives Stefan a gun, telling him to escort Duvalier out and shoot him if he resists. The Baron again speaks with Ilsa, who continues to persuade him to kill himself, and this time, he agrees. Stefan warns Duvalier not to resist or he will kill him. Thunder claps and lightning strikes, and Duvalier attacks Stefan, winning him over and taking the gun from him. He follows Helene into the cemetery, and suddenly the witch appears from behind a tombstone. He threatens her, only to see the bird now approaching to kill him. He tells the witch to call it off. She tells him it was too late because the Baron was about to pay with his own life for what he did to her, which was killing her son Eric. Stefan, recovering from his fight with Duvalier, enters the castle to find the Baron raising the portcullis to enter. The Baron knocks him in the head and continues to go flood the crypt. Stefan lets Duvalier inside, who attacks him and demands he be taken to the Baron. Duvalier informs him that the witch had manipulated Helene to influence the Baron to kill himself, so her son would be avenged, and that she didn't know that he, Stefan, was the one who killed Eric. The witch tried to attack Stefan then and was held back. Stefan then revealed that it wasn't Eric who was killed that night, but the Baron. Eric was pretending to be the Baron all along. The witch now realizes that Eric and Helene were about to die in the soon flooded crypt and runs off. Duvalier and Stefan run to the Baron, but fail to enter the secret entrance. Duvalier ran off to try and enter from the chapel. He grabbed the witch along the way and told her he may need her help. She resisted greatly, stating she could not enter the chapel because she had made her pact with the devil. She ran off and was struck by lightning and burned to death immediately. Duvalier watched in shock, then went into the chapel and tried to get the crypt door open using a crowbar. The Baron kneeled at Ilsa's coffin and is again prompted by the voice to flood the crypt. He pries open the coffin and continues to follow the prompting of the voice. Stefan finally accesses the secret passage and rushes toward the crypt. The Baron turns a wheel that opens the floodgates underground. The girl tells him to look at her, and he removes the cloth in the coffin and is frightened by Ilsa's zombified body lying there. She tells him that she is Ilsa's spirit and has tricked him into giving his soul so she can be free. She calls him Eric, though, as she knows he is not the real Baron. He tries to turn back the wheel, but she attacks him, and they tussle together as the water rises. Stefan finally reaches the crypt and dives in to save Eric. The water spews in and the rocks begin to crumble around them. Duvalier finally pries open the crypt door entrance from the chapel, just in time to pull Helene's body from the water. It was too late for Eric and Stefan. He carries her out of the castle and into the cemetery, where he tells her she was free. And she asked, Free? They kiss, but he quickly recoils in shock when he sees her face begin to melt and deteriorate. He hears the bird above and looks up. He looks back at her as she continued to melt away to nothing. <laughs>